Hey guys, in this video, we're going to go over the difference between backlinks and mirrors and hopefully give you a better idea of when you might want to use one versus the other. So the first thing we need to do is turn on backlinks and the features if you haven't done so already. And the way we do that is we go to the menu bar on the top right hand corner and then we go to settings and we slide down. Make sure that you've activated the experimental uh, features tab. So this one right here, Workflow Labs, you've got that activated. And once you do that, you might need to refresh the application. You go down and you've got these two options here, which are backlinks and inline linking. You want to make sure both of those are activated. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do or follow the, the examples that I have in this video. All right. So the first thing you want to know uh, or the first thing you want to think about basically is what's more useful for you at a given moment when you're thinking about whether you want to use backlinks or mirrors, whether it's knowing the connections uh, between different pieces of information or whether having that information available is more important. So if it's the connections, that's a backlink. If it's having access to the information so you can manipulate it, that's a mirror. So we'll go through some different examples and hopefully it'll become clear. Let's go through backlinks first, which are of course useful for linking ideas together or, and uh, creating relationships between different pieces of data. In Workflow, we do that uh, with this inline notation, which is double brackets. So we just start typing double bracket, we're going to get this little widget that lets us search for an item. So I can just search for something or start typing. And once I find the item, I can use the arrows as well. I just hit enter. And that's how we create uh, a backlink. So the main use of backlinks is really for research, for writing and for notes. Those are not the only uh, ways that you can use backlinks, but those are the main uh, uses for it. So for example, Let's say that I'm you know, writing some notes on existentialism. And as I take my notes, I already have a bullet that covers the topic. I've got some more notes in there. What I can do, I'll just replicate right here. And I'm just writing, double bracket. I can start typing ex existentialism. There we go. I've got my node show up there. I hit enter, and I've created a backlink. I can also do this uh, to make citations on topics, on basically anything that you can you can imagine. Obviously, the most common use is around topics, around keywords like existentialism, or around citations like this one right here. Let's say I'm referencing uh, a paper, a journal, a website, right? You could create a backlink out of that. So the cool thing about using backlinks like this is that once you click on an item that you've backlinked, right? This is the page that I mentioned. I created it at some point, and I've added some notes here. I added some images. You can. Yeah, right? It's a regular document. You could add anything you want. This section right here is what makes it super powerful. Right here, we can see everywhere we've referenced this item. So everywhere I've referenced this page right here, existentialism, I can see not only the location of that backlink, so that's right here, right here, and right here. I can also get the actual content of that backlink. So here, right at the beginning is where I mentioned it. And in this case right here, it's at the very end. So that's really cool uh, in terms of creating a uh, basically a kind of a bibliography of all the references that point to this item right here, existentialism. So that's what makes it really well suited for research and notes and papers and that sort of thing. One alternative way to use backlinks that I haven't seen uh, talked a lot about is as a personal CRM. So for example, let's say that I have an agenda and I you know, take notes every day of what I did during the day. And this could be there for my own personal uh, you know, life about my friends and family members and everyone that I work with, or it could be uh, more tailored to something like, uh, let's say you're a salesperson, uh, you're a doctor, you deal with a lot of people. Um, basically, you wanna be able to keep everybody straight, right? Um, what your what, what activities you are involved with with each person, any notes, if you work with them, um, you know, even if you're not in sales or, or deal with a lot of people, if you're just someone that wants to be able to keep track of all the activities that you, uh, you know, have uh, with other people, this will be one way to do that. So in this case, instead of creating the backlinks around topics, we're creating the backlinks around people. And what that allows us to do is create one one bullet for each person, and then we can put uh, relevant information for that person. So let's say that their birthday, their hobbies, you know, if this is for a personal uh, CRM, you know, when their birthday is, what their email is, what their favorite color is, things like that. Uh, for work, this might be, um, you know, what their email address is, uh, yeah, what their email is, what their phone number is, um, important apps that they use, 
what have you, whatever makes sense for, for the business. And then right here in the backlink section, what we've got is a chronology basically of all the activities uh, that we have going on with these people. So if we ever forget, oh, you know, when did we meet? On what day was that? What did we talk about? As long as you create that backlink in your journal or in your today list or wherever you keep track of those activities, as long as you create a backlink uh, with that person's name, you'll be able to very quickly jump to that and remember and get all the context. So in some ways, this is better than having a photographic memory because you can really remember everything, all the activities and interactions you've had with people and be able to access all the context. So if you have any documents, images that you keep inside of Workflowy, as long as you create a backlink to that person, um, you'll have access to all those notes. So a, just kind of a different way to use uh, backlinks that I haven't seen mentioned a lot, but pretty useful. So that's backlinks. Now let's move on to mirrors. And as I mentioned, mirrors are useful when you want to basically pull items or information uh, into another space, either to manipulate them or to reference them. So I've got some examples of that. Uh, and the way to create mirrors inside of Workflow is to do a double parentheses. Again, we'll get this little search widget. We just start typing. And once we find the item, we hit enter to create a mirror. So here's some different ways to do that, uh, to, to use mirrors. One is to uh, mirror references or lists into a space you're working from. So a very simple example of that would be that let's say that I have a today list that I like to work from. So I've got, maybe I've got this starred and every day I just open up my today list and I work from there, right? Got to take the kids to soccer practice, buy a gift for Maru's birthday, clean out my inbox for real this time. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, but let's say that I also need to go to the grocery store. So I've got a grocery list somewhere else inside of my workflow. Uh, or let's say that maybe I didn't even create the grocery list. Maybe my wife created the grocery list, but we keep it inside of one workflow document. Uh, what I could do is find it, copy it, paste it in here, and then go to the grocery store and cross the items out. But then I would have to go back to the original grocery list um, and then update all the items, right? Let's say that I didn't get, I don't know, I didn't get the dog food because they didn't have the brand that, that we bought or something like that. So to avoid having to do that back and forth, I can simply mirror any node into wherever I'm working from. So in this case, I'm working from my today bullet right here. I know it's called grocery list, right? So what I'll do is simply mirror it like that. And there we go. It's kind of like pulling it into my uh, today section. So I can open it up, go to the grocery store and complete those items or cross them off when I add them to my cart, or purchase them. And when I'm done, I can either delete the grocery list uh, from my today list like this, just like that. And, you know, I'll be sure that wherever the original grocery list exists, let's say in, in, in my wife's workflowy uh, section, then she'll be able to see that it's been completed and what items I've bought, what items I haven't bought, or if I've added anything, and so on. So that's one way to do that. And that allows me to just kind of pull items from different places inside of Workflowy, update them, manipulate them, add items, and then get rid of them if I don't need to, to work from them uh, anymore. So that's one very simple example of pulling items and then manipulating them. Another example is, is for dashboards. So I've got a really, another simple example here. Let's say that this is a, a sales team, right? And they've got leads, then they have to follow up with those leads, and then they have to close the sales. So, so far so good. This looks like a very standard kind of a layout, right? Kanban board style. But actually what's happening here is that each one of these columns is being mirrored from a different section inside of Workflow. So let's say that I'm working within a team and one person is involved or, or, or in charge of leads, so, you know, acquiring leads. Then we have a follow-up team and then we have a sales team, the, the, the closers, right? Um, so even though I can see them all right here in one single dashboard, actually I'm just, uh, you know, seeing different uh, sections of the entire workflow document. So uh, if I open up this, this uh, the bullet menu here so you can see where we're mirroring from, you can see this is actually from someplace else, right? Even looks like it's all happening here. All the action is happening in this Kanban board. And I'll go ahead and recreate that, this entire dashboard just to show you what that looks like and to show you that it's really simple to do. So I'm gonna create a, a new column here and we're gonna create a mirror called leads. And there we go. And then we'll create the follow-up one, just like that. And finally, the sales one just like that. So again, what we're seeing is kind of the uh, different sections. So this leads uh, section is actually 
a list that's somewhere else inside of the workflow document. This one is somewhere completely different inside of the workflow document and, and, and likewise with the sales one. But what mirroring allows me to do is to pull them all together so I can see them in a nice organized dashboard. And I can even manipulate them, which is the added benefit of having mirrors. You don't just see the information. You don't just see the references. You can actually manipulate them. So let's say that, you know, I, I know for a fact that uh, Gerald Campbell, you know, we need to follow up with him. He's no longer a lead. He's been, you know, he's shown interest or so on. I can simply grab it, drag it and drop it into the follow-ups column. And wherever this list is, the follow-ups team is going to handle it. So, you know, in this imaginary case, we're saying that either a different person handles each one of these steps or even a different team. Uh, and this just allows me to see where we are in terms of uh, workload for each one of these teams. And I can manually make changes here uh, across those entirely different areas of workflow from one single dashboard. So that's a really powerful way to use uh, mirrors. And then next, I wanna talk about an easy way to move items in line. Um, so for example, let's say that I wanna move something here you could, of course, uh, star the destination, open up the left sidebar, drag it into the start item. That's one way to do that. You could copy it and paste it. Very standard way to do that. But if you don't want to have to, you know, work as much, mirroring is definitely an easy way to do that, uh, especially when you're working with uh, bullets that have a bunch of content inside of them, boards, images, you know, you don't want to click drag and then keep dragging and find out exactly where you need to stop and copy and paste it make me kind of messy. Mirroring lets us do that in a much easier way. So let's say that I want to move a list of honey facts that I just have, you know, random honey facts as one does here. So it's somewhere else within my workflow document. I know what it's called. So all I need to do is mirror it in line. So let's say just like that, interesting honey facts. I hit enter and there we go. I've mirrored it. Um, but what we want to do is actually copy it. So once we've mirrored it, it's in the original location, and now it's here inside of this section right here. What I can do is open up the bullet menu for the, the mirrored node. And if I want to copy it, um, I'm sorry, if I want to move it, then what I would do is see where the original one is, like this. It's right here. And then I could move up one level, select all this, and delete it. And now I know that the one that I have um, in my in the section where I moved it is the only one that exists, right? It's gone back to being a regular bullet and all my information is in here. So that's one way to move items. But you can also, um, basically there's an alternative way to copy items as well. So I, I almost accidentally did that just, uh, just a second ago. So let's say that I have a list of templates that I like to use. This can be for meetings, for sales, for pitches, for contracts, uh, for leads, any kind of activity basically that has a checklist or some sort of a document associated with it that has a set format, you kind of know you're gonna need it over and over again. You can have a library of those inside of your workflow somewhere. And then wherever you're working from, you know, let's say that I, again, I'm working from my today bullet. I think this is a pretty common uh, way to work. You know, you have one specific place you like to work from. Then you don't have to copy. You can simply mirror it into that section, detach it and you're good. So I'm gonna show you how to do that with a, uh, a meeting template. So let's say I've got a meeting template that I like to use. I've mirrored it here, right? I've got some stuff that I wanna remember to do pre and uh, during the meeting and then post meeting, I wanna write down some takeaways just to kind of help remind me what I need to do for the meeting so it's a productive meeting. So what I'll do after I've mirrored it is open up the bullet menu and slide down here to detach mirror. And so the only thing that does is sever the mirror connection and they both go back to being regular mirrors. And there we go. That's an easy way to kind of make a, a copy of a template that I use over and over again without having to remember where it is, drag and drop, right? Again, I'll show you how quick that is. Um, there we go, right? All I need to do is detach the mirror and that's it. I'm ready to have a very productive meeting. So I hope that these examples have been useful for you and they've kind of helped give you an idea of when you might want to use mirrors versus backlinks. So again, backlinks are when the uh, the connections between the different pieces of information are more interesting to you. Knowing those connections is what's most relevant. And mirrors are really for when you want to be able to pull information into a different place, manipulate it or reference it somehow. So don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, and we'll see you in the next one.